Basically, he's ran out of insults for me. He's ran out of uh, nicknames and silly words. So basically, I think that was just his final part and shot that he could get in. It was absolutely pathetic. But does it really matter? No. Nope. He says he's been back in the gym since two days after the fight. Obviously, he's had a rehabilitation through injury. Do you think that he's thinking it's last chance saloon, that I have to get this right? He's brought Ishmael Salas in. Mm. He's obviously going to come in later. He's going to work on tactics, the, the boxing, rather than the sort of going in and mm. trying to bomb you out, you'd have thought. Is, is that what's in his mind? Can you work out what's in his mind? Well, what's going through his mind is he has to win this fight. This is... For the first time in his whole career, his career is on the line. He understands and he knows. He's already come out in the public. And his words were, if I can't knock Tony Bellew out, I am finished with boxing. So that's him saying that if he doesn't, just to knock me out. When he loses, that means he's gone. I've, I've, I've closed the curtain on David Hayes. Illustrious, fabulous career, whatever you want to call it. Uh, in my mind, it's a circus. Well, well, it was a circus before the first fight, mm -hmm. then it unfolded. Obviously, it was dramatic from start to finish. Mm -hmm. At the end, there was a little embrace. Mm -hmm. which, was, which was, which came from me. Ultimately, it didn't come from him. What I would like to say on that embrace is, <clears throat> I think regret's too much of a strong word. Uh, I look back on it, and I know he would never have done the same thing, Adam. If he'd have absolutely blasted me in two rounds like he said he was going to do, left me comatose on the floor, which he said he was going to do, drill me to the floor, all these words he said. If he'd have done that, he would have ridiculed me, he would have laughed at me, he would have degraded me, and he would have said, look, I've beaten a world champion, and he would have probably blamed Eddie Hearn, laughed at Eddie Hearn too. That was probably all his game plan. <coughs> but he never. And my first response and reaction should have been to celebrate with my team, with the people who have got me through it. Many men were in the ring that night, but my first reaction wasn't to celebrate with the team. It was to go over and thank him for what he'd just done and what he'd done. And like I say, without a shout, without David Hay, I wouldn't have made what I made that night to make my fan, family financially secure. And that's what the embrace was about. The embrace wasn't about him gaining my respect as a fighter or I like him as a person. Nothing of the sort. I've always respected him as a fighter. He's a fabulous fighter, an amazing athlete. The embrace was purely to thank him for what he'd done for me and my family. After that, I don't like the guy. He's not a nice guy. He, it doesn't matter which way you want to dress this up. He talks a lot of nonsense. He says a lot of vicious, nasty, vile stuff. And he's just not a nice guy. And he will show us true colours again. He in, really, really will. In many ways, he needs this more than you do. Yes. Does he want it more as well? He's trying to convince himself now. And I, I straight away, I understand his mindset and, and what he's... He's trying to make sense of why I'm doing this fight again. Because in David's mind... He thinks that he is completely above me in every level. He thinks I shouldn't even... In David's mind, Tony Bell, you can't even carry his jockstrap. I know that's how he thinks. I know the man David is. I know the egotistical maniac he is. And that's what he's thinking. So he, he'll blame the injury in his mind and he will think he's going to blow me away in two rounds again. You think that rather than trying to utilise his boxing skills that have brought him world championships at cruiser around a heavyweight. Let's just look at it this way, Adam. Show me one person, one fighter in his whole career who has a versatile style, who can adapt who he's beaten. Just show me one. The best win of his career still to date is the win over Jean-Marc mm -hmm. Mormack in Paris. Mm -hmm. Jean-Marc Mormack is a flat-footed brawler who comes to fight in your face. The, that is the best win of his career, even now. Any time he's came up against a guy who can outlast him, any time he's come up against a guy who has a plan B, instead of just walking forward like this with a straight back asking to hit me and I'll hit you, that's the style he likes. I am not that style of fighter. He's always going to struggle with a style like mine, regardless of what I'm throwing back. If I went in the ring just to defend myself against David Hay, I wouldn't get, I'd barely get hit. I can read them like I've studied them for too many years. I can read his attacks like a, he's like an open book to me. I can see it coming. I did, it wasn't no fluke in the amount of times I made him miss in that fight. OK, we look at the injury. Yes, he got an Achilles injury in that sixth round. But for the first five rounds, if if Tony Bell used that bad, which 
he openly said before the fight, <clears throat> and he said in today's press comments, I didn't underestimate you. So if he didn't underestimate me in the first fight, that means he still believes I'm the worst world champion in the world. I'm slow. I'm not that strong. I'm not that quick. He still believes all them facts. He can never get away from it. It's the fact of him trying to hit me that he struggles with. And I, will, I see the attack. I've studied him for too long. I know when he moves in certain ways, in certain directions, I don't know what's coming. That's why, in all of his whole career, has anybody ever made him miss like that? No one's ever put him through ropes. No one's ever spun him round. Or It's just never happened. I got his respect in the very first round with the first left hook that hit him on my head. The minute it hit him, I got his respect. That's why David Hay didn't walk me down. There's a reason why when David fights, he stalks and walks opponents down if they haven't got the power to keep him off. And eventually, he takes them out. The Giacobbe Fragomeni mm -hmm. is a sure. perfect example. Giacobbe Fragomeni isn't a big enough puncher. And what David done, he strategically broke him down because he could work when he wanted to work with someone like me. He's not hitting me, and I'm applying gradual pressure. The feet's getting closer. It's making him nervous. Today, he was nervous. People in that press conference, people don't see it because they, they don't know what they're looking for. But in today's press conference, David was nervous. David was etchy, he was touchy. It wasn't until we got face to face and I told him, the eyes never lie, David. You're putting on a great act. This is it. The acting lessons have paid off. They were the words I said to him. The acting lessons have paid off. You're putting on a great act. Eventually, he will show us true colours. Me, I'm the same as I was last time. But David Hay remains the bookie's favourite. Read into that what you will. Many weeks to go till that. We were up in Liverpool last week for yeah. a really good show. Paul Butler looking fantastic. Mm. Rocky Fielding with a dramatic win. Masha Dodd, Ahara Davis. It was uh, something for everybody, wasn't it? It was for me. I thought Rocky Fielding got to play the night. I thought it was a fantastic win uh, to go in there and do that in the manner that he did. It was very similar to the Luke Blackledge fight. You know, when you go into it, the 50-50s, and you're thinking, you know, if this guy gets past a few rounds at Rocky, it's going to give him trouble. But then Rocky comes out, shocks everybody again. Good left hook on the top of the head, which left <clears throat> which left the opponent completely dazed. Brophy just didn't know what to do. You see, seen a quick shake in the leg. Rocky pounced on him and attacked. Finished him off. Fantastic fight. Uh, O'Hara Davis coming from a setback against Josh Taylor. You know, we're thinking, is he done? Is he not? Uh, I don't think it was a good fight. Mm -hmm. for, for, for Tom Fadl in any way, shape or form. And I think, in my opinion, he was left far too long to go on because no, Tom Fadl isn't a puncher no. and he's been down three or four times in a fight. He's behind on the It cards. was uncomfortable viewing, wasn't it? It, it wasn't nice. Yeah. It really, really wasn't nice. And, and I know Tom's a loyal boy to his trainer and, and I know Dan is trainer, but ultimately, lessons were learned for both parties in that fight, for, for Tom as a boxer and a major lesson for Dan as a, as a coach and a trainer. It's very easy to let a fighter go too long. You've got to be brave at times. His life's in your hands, you need to save him. Simple as that, and that's what I'd like to address on that fight. <clears throat> uh, Paul Butler seems to have added new tools to his, mm. you know, new strings to his bow. He looked very good, counter-punching. Yeah, he was Accurate. slick, <clears throat> slick, quick. Uh, I'd like to see him sit down on the shots a little mm -hmm. bit more, but ultimately, very slick, very quick. Counter-punching was brilliant, so uh, he looked very good. And Masha. He just keeps shocking everybody, doesn't he? <laughs> he just... Where does this story end with him? He's like the uh, the Cinderella man at Birkenhead. Yeah. <laughs> uh, he's doing... <clears throat> he's doing great. I felt I felt for Tom Stalker, I really did, because there was parts in the fight where he looked good, but he just couldn't maintain it and keep going. But, you know, I wish Tom the very best in whatever he chose to do. It was me who took Tom on his first ever England squad, or GP squad, and... Uh, he, for someone who started boxing so late in the day, I think it was 19 or 20, mm -hmm. he started boxing. <clears throat> He's had a fantastic career, and I only wish him, wish him well, I really do. Masha Dodd's got more nights to come. You know, where's the story going to end the European title? You know, believe it or not, <laughs> this, this fella could end up getting a world title <laughs> shot at something it's else. Cool, you, just, you don't know. Well, look at your story. Yes. Um, this weekend, good fight. Burns and Crawler. What's your uh, prediction on that? A proper, proper trade fight. Something that has been on the lips of people for many years. Mm. You know, we've wanted to... We've, we've talked it, you know, after Crawler's great wins over Perez, you know, and other wins that he's had, you, you've always thought, is Ricky Burns a step too far? Because ultimately, Ricky Burns has proven himself at a, at a good level. He really has, and he's always took on the best challenges all over the world. And you've always thought with Crawler, he's, he's, he's shocked people with mm. his wins at the times he's had them. This fight now is... For me... Who's got the most left? 
because they've both had damaging careers, they've both suffered setbacks, they've both been in hard, hard fights. So now it's about, like I say, who's got the most left, who's the most durable, because that's what it's going to come down, down to. <clears throat> it's, it's a tough one. I think Crawler's ruggedness and determinus will see him through. I think Ricky Benz has definitely got the edge in power. I think he's the bigger puncher of the two. I just feel if Crawler sees through four, five, six rounds, he will come into the fight. It's really hard, and I don't want to sit on the fence. <laughs> I just it's it's a real pick and fight, Adam. For once, I can't nail me colours to the mast and say it's him, it's him. <clears throat> Excuse me, it's him or it's him. It's just styles make fights, and their styles can't help but gel. I'm looking forward to seeing Anthony Crawler's tactics and game plan, and I'm looking forward to seeing what Ricky Benz is going to do. For me, if I was a coach of either one, I would be going keep it long with Ricky Benz, let Anthony Crawler walk in, let's see how much he can absorb. And if you're Anthony Crawler, you need to get on the chest of Ricky Benz, take away that height advantage, take away the reach advantage, make his legs, go the body, make his legs less ineffective. So it, there's, there's so many different tools to be used for both fighters, but ultimately, I think this fighter could come down. Well, I know it's going to come down to who wants it the most and who has the most left. On Saturday, we'll get the answers. Tony, always a pleasure. Your compelling clash with David Hay. December the 17th, Sky Sports box office, of course. Join us, though, this Saturday night on Sky Sports for Anthony Crawler and Ricky Burns. Sam Eggington also on a busy, busy Manchester night. It should be fun.